let's start right away with with what is called the hazard analysis and risk-based preventive control measure. Uh, we call it um, HARP-C because we can't think of anything else to call it. Um, uh, it's, uh, this, this is a, a provision that um, uh, it's very close cousin to HACCP has regulations FDA, that FDA wrote, um, uh, in my view, I think out of whole cloth, uh, probably lacking the authority um, to write the HACCP regs. Here you've got a statute that um, uh, the Congress has given FDA the authority to, um, to create a similar kind of regulatory regime for other foods. Uh, under under the um, HARP-C provision, uh, each facility uh, is, uh, must engage in a certain series of tasks, and we're going we're gonna to talk about what those are. First, uh, um, each food facility is required to conduct a hazard analysis to identify and evaluate known hazards that are reasonably likely to occur unless they're controlled. Uh, these hazards might be biological hazards, chemical hazards, natural toxins, or maybe intentionally added to food. Uh, in that sense, when you think of intentional food hazards, you think food security. Um, so that's the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the manufacturer who is subject to HARP-C requirements will also have to prepare a written analysis of these hazards and be prepared to present it to the FDA eventually. Um, so this is the, um, uh, uh, this, this is a, 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 actually someone just pointed out to me that I'm on the wrong slide, so I'm moving up. I apologize. Slide six is where we should be. So, yes, yeah, so that's the first bullet point under, under requirement. Um, after conducting, um, so this, this uh, hazard analysis requirement, it's, it's conducting an, an analysis to identify and evaluate known hazards reasonably likely to occur unless controlled. Uh, after, after conducting um, and writing out this hazard analysis, the firm has to develop and implement preventative controls that are designed to, uh, to mitigate that hazard and monitor the effectiveness of the controls that are put into place. Uh, if, um, if these controls are then not successful, uh, and, and that would be discovered through some monitoring step uh, in the firm, then the firm would be required to implement a corrective action uh, plan and verify that that corrective action was, um, was effective and was successful. Uh, we would expect that, um, like HACCP, the HACCP regulations the FDA already has, FDA would require that the corrective action <clears throat> not just address the food that was produced during the time when the controls failed, in other words, that food that is uh, consequently out of compliance, but that the, the corrective actions should also address the control, um, uh, address uh, the control failure that's in the system itself. In, in other words, the, um, uh, it's not just about the food that was produced, it's about the fruit, food that will be produced the next time. And so FDA would look for correction um, and adjusting and validating the control so that it would not fail again. Um, these preventive controls must all be included in a written plan that FDA would want to see, uh, eventually the HARP-C plan, uh, and you must provide it to FDA if requested orally or in writing. So, so if FDA were to do an inspection and ask for the, for the HARP-C plan, then you'd have to present it. But um, it, the statute also gives FDA the authority to request it uh, in writing, which means that they could certainly request it to foreign facilities uh, quite easily. Um, every three years, uh, the, the statute requires that um, that the firm uh, reanalyze uh, their, their, their food and their systems to identify any new potential hazards that may have arisen and to adjust their plan as necessary. Uh, if, if the firm were to change processing in significant ways, for instance, if you were to change raw materials uh, or raw material suppliers or uh, some processing step or parameter that could have effect on hazards and, and hazard control and food risk and food safety, or if you were to change packaging, um, FDA could, um, uh, could consider that to be the kind of change that's reasonably likely to present a new risk, and then you'd have to do a new hazard analysis um, as, a res as a result of that change. Um, it it's also um, under the statute that the firm must maintain records of all the steps that are, that are in the, ha the HARP-C plan. <clears throat> they must document that these steps are being performed. Um, this means creating entirely new record systems to document the analysis, uh, the parameters of the controls, the monitoring steps, and the corrective actions, as well as um, verification, verification procedures on the on the um, on the other side. And in, in my view, Congress adds to the kinds of risks that should be controlled intentional adulteration language, uh, which I think you, uh, means you can expect FDA to start dictating standards for food security, for supply chain security related to foods and food distribution, uh, package integrity, and um, facility even facility security. Um, FDA has has written a number of guidance documents on food security, I think that you should consider, um, at least keep an eye out for, and consider the likelihood 
that those guidance documents will soon um, uh, begin to look like regs. In fact, probably would be um, eventually promulgated as regs. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, we do get to this, um, this slide talking about exemptions. Uh, there are some facilities that are exempt from the HARP-C requirement. Um, those include um, food facilities that are otherwise subject to other requirements in the, in the Act, uh, one of them being uh, facilities subject to the standards of produce safety. We'll talk about those um, in the next uh, slide or so here. Um, then then um, uh, other facilities subject that are exempt from the harp sea requirements are facilities subject to HACCP, that's both seafood HACCP and juice HACCP. Um, if, they're, um, if they're already um, subject to those requirements and they're complying with HACCP, then they would be exempt from these harp sea requirements. And then um, facilities subject to dietary supplement um, good manufacturing practices and who are in compliance with them. So this is one exemption for the dietary supplement industry if they're in compliance with the new GMPs for dietary supplements. Congress um, gave them a wave or a pass on this. Um, F FSMA requires FDA to um, promulgate regulations in order to implement it. And those regulations um, uh, would be, the effective date would be um, uh, of, this, of this requirement, uh, the HARP-C requirement is July 4, 2012, um, which is about 18 months after enactment. Um, that is, um, that's lightning speed for FDA. That's, that's very, very rapid. Um, you'll see there, I've got a note about small and very small businesses. Um, there are extensions of time that are permitted for small businesses and very small businesses. FDA gets to decide who those businesses are. Um, uh, subject to a, um, an algorithm the statute provides that has to do in part uh, with the amount of revenue that's generated from the, the, um, the sale of food. Uh, but um, uh, small businesses will have um, uh, six months uh, in addition uh, to the, um, uh, the, the original 18 months, so have 24 total. And then um, uh, very small businesses will have an additional 18 months, so they would have 36 months total um, from the enactment of the statute. Um, 18 months after the regulations um, become effective. So, so there is some, some phase in for small businesses and for very small businesses, and that's, I think, important. Um, uh, who is responsible? The owner and the um, uh, operator, or excuse me, the owner, operator, or agent in charge is considered responsible for this, um, this requirement. Uh, the question of what happens if a firm does not comply uh, the, food, the food is deemed adulterated under the Food Drug Cosmetic Act. Um, and I would add that, that Congress also added a, this is a, something Congress has been doing recently in the last few, uh, probably 10 years, where they add a prohibited act to the statute if you fail to comply with a requirement. Uh, it used to be that if you just introduce adulterated food in interstate commerce, then that was a prohibited act. Now you've got a prohibited act for failing to comply with HARP-C requirements specifically. Um, and the significance of that is that the Food and Drug Cosmetic Act is what we call a strict liability criminal statute. And um, FDA uh, has the power to, and in fact does, uh, uh, actually do, um, does actually prosecute companies um, and individuals um, uh, who violate the Food and Drug Cosmetic Act, and they're not required to prove an intent to, to violate the law. Um, it's a strict liability statute. And whenever Congress adds a prohibited act, it gives FDA that power. So here the prohibited act is failure to comply with the harp -C requirement. Um, uh, so that's uh, that's of some pretty that's some some significance to people that are in this, obviously in the food industry. Um, failing to comply also uh, would include um, failing to provide a copy of your HARP-C plan if you were requested by a, by an FDA official, for instance during an inspection or prior to importing food or or basically whenever. Um, that could also be a prohibited act. Uh, the only limitation in that case would be sort of a reasonableness standard. FDA can't show up at your facility at 2 o'clock in the morning and expect you to have a copy of your plan, um, unless you're operating at 2 o'clock in the morning, um, in which case maybe they could. But, but it has to be reasonable. The request has to be reasonable. A facility in this case um, uh, is defined as each domestic and foreign facility, um, which is required to register with FDA as a food facility under the bioterrorism regulations. Um, consequently, the, the produce safety um, standards uh, company is subject to that very ordinarily are farms, and in many cases farms are not subject to registration, so they're actually governed by another, uh, by another provision in the, in, the, in the new law, which we'll talk about in a moment. One argument that's been hanging around for quite a number of years is whether FDA ever even had the authority to institute its HACCP regs, these are for seafood and juice. Um, many argued it didn't because FDA didn't have the authority because it was adding record-keeping provisions that FDA did not have express authority to require. 
um, uh, under the FSMA, uh, FDA is getting much closer to sort of a nod from Congress because um, the HACCP regs are actually, and the HACCP program is actually identified in FSMA, um, indicating that um, it's likely that, uh, it's unlikely, I would say that, it's unlikely if, if someone could successfully challenge FDA's authority in HACCP, and it's most likely because of this um, FSMA that's given to FDA sort of a nod towards HACCP. 